Hi, I'm Patrick, and I'm part of the Get Rap Worship team. We're so excited that you decided to join us today. And we want to hear about all of the amazing things that God is doing in your life. Go to mygwcstory at gmail.com and tell us about your testimony and all the things that God is doing. If this ministry has been a blessing to you and you want to bless the ministry, go and download our free Get Rap TV app and choose whatever giving option is best for you. We're so excited that you're here. Enjoy the message. So I started thinking about that reposition thinking, right? And as I started thinking about that, I said, all right, prison break. So there's going to be prison break. You, every good prison break needs a crew. Right? I mean, now, I'm not encouraging, you know, if you know anybody in prison, to write them and say, look, pastor started talking about break out of prison with a crew. I am not saying that. I'm still talking about a mind thing. But to get out of prison, every good prison break needs a crew, right? Because you might be the guy with the idea, but you might not know nothing about measurements and how deep and how far. And so you need somebody with that kind of stuff. You need somebody else that could get the plans, right? Because if not, you're going to be digging in the wrong spot. Never get out. <laughs> good idea, but you stuck. Last week, we talked about, you know, I grew up and, and we always said stuck like Chuck. Everybody say, man, you stuck like Chuck. My whole life, I heard stuck like Chuck. I kind of started feeling bad last week when I started going on my sermon. I said, man, I wonder who Chuck is. <laughs> I mean, he's been stuck for a long time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm starting a campaign, free Chuck. <laughs> now, the crazy part is that some of you still are Chuck. The same might have went away, but some of us are still stuck, like free Chuck, y'all. The reality is that we all need a crew to break out. Come on, all these little, everything you've seen, the Astros when they won the championship, they had a crew. Everything. I started thinking of New York City. The New York City Breakers. I, oh, watch out. I, I had to bring it out. I had to bring it out. I heard you. <laughs> Y'all ain't ready. I was going to break at Love Wins, but I started thinking, I went from break dancing to I'm going to break something. <laughs> so, so I chilled out. I, <laughs> because I, I see them doing windmills. I'm like, I used to have that in me. And I wanted to, too, but I was like, nah, it's cool. <laughs> they had been rock steady crew new york city breakers they all had crews and they could all do some could do back the dude that couldn't do a backspin wasn't tripping over the guy that could pop my man nando was i mean he he was pulling out the <laughs> i mean i was like yo i'm talking about every move I mean, he was pulling them all out. I'm like, this dude is crazy. I'm like, next thing, yep, he did it. <laughs> I'm thinking, what? Running man? I mean, like, I mean, he's, get, he's like going after it. His wife is just like, she's just trying to like, yo, if I can keep up with this dude, he's like rocking it. I'm like, wow. To every prison break, we need a crew. The course of your life is not just determined by who we are. But it's also impacted by what crew you hang out with. I'm going to say it again. The course of life is not just determined by who we are. It is also impacted by who we hang out with. By what crew you hang out with. Are you with me? We have been created. I almost called this one the uh, 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 remix. Because I believe that we've been created for collaborations to live together, connected. Right? These guys sold tons of records. Tons of records. You can say, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, he about to dance. It's not a dance thing. He's like, Pastor gonna want me to... Music! No, I'm joking. Yeah, he turns on. I'm telling you. He turns on. I, I, you can't play. No, you thought I was bad. This dude. I mean, any sound. It's like... Kung, kung. You could tell when he was young, he was just in the club, like, now that we have to go home. He's like, one more dance. 
<laughs> See, we've been created to, for collaborations and coming together to connect, except that most of the time we base our connections based upon our personalities and who we are, and we attract who we are, and we usually pick like the same kind of people because we're all picking about dance, uh, uh, dancing, uh, laughing. You, you pick kind of what you are, but sometimes in life, that's not what's needed to help you build. Come on, you've seen the Avengers? They all had a different gift. All of them. And they could not win that battle. To the point where, I mean, I saw Jesus all over that. In time of Avengers, all over it. Who was Iron Man? Jesus. He gave his life. Y'all ain't with me. Let me stop there because I'm going to get y'all all Avengers in. But the reality is that some of our lives look like this. Nothing since we're. Nothing since we're. We're like, what? My life just doesn't make sense. Nothing since we're. Nice shirt, by the way. But I mean, it makes no sense. At all. And some of you in your life, because I hear this a lot. What's my purpose? I don't know what to do in life. Maybe you're missing what you're supposed to be connected to. Or maybe you're connected, if you're married, you're connected to something that gets you agitated, but in all reality, it's an asset. And maybe when you connect to who you're supposed to get, be connected to, I think you come over here. When you're connected, you see that nothing makes sense when we're apart. Thank you. He gonna dance. He's like, babe, you want to dance? <laughs> I love that dude. I'm gonna put him in the good, good vibes tent. We can't put him out there. <laughs> he won't say hi to nobody. He just dances all the. So the reality is that in Genesis, God said it's not good for man to be alone. But I started thinking, like, God, were you, were you tripping? Because it's not good for man to be alone. Yet you were with him. So how could the creator of the universe say it's not good for God, for man to be alone, yet God was with him? See, because I truly believe that man also needed someone besides him in order to be everything that God had called them to be. One that looked like him. In flesh. And the reality is that a lot of times we don't see the necessity to connect with other people but what do I need other people for? Because you think you got it all figured out. Especially successful people. I'm always talking to people who have businesses and have all that stuff. And I'm always reprioritizing their priorities. Because after a while, you start thinking you got And you got it. Just because you got some things in your life. But the reality is, you were created with a gift to connect with someone else. Proverbs 27, 17, it says it takes a grinding wheel to sharpen a blade, and so one person sharpens the character of another. Think about what that's saying. It's saying that you should be sharpening with somebody else. You have to be shoulder to shoulder sharpening with someone else. The, the, the truth of the matter is, though, who are you sharpening up against with? Because if you're sharpening your blade against someone who's dull, eventually... Your blade is not going to be sharp anymore either. What does it say in Proverbs 13, 20? He who walks with wise men will be wise. Now, I want you to just, just really think about this for a minute because I, I want you to have this aha moment, right? Because most of my life, I guess I did the opposite. He who walks with wise men will be be wise. He who walks with wise men will be wise. Now here's the kicker. You ready? Here's the kicker. But the companion of fools will suffer harm. So you don't have to be a fool. All you have to be is a companion of a fool and you're going to be suffering harm too. Right? So you could be real smart if you're hanging out with fools. It says here, but the companion of fools, meaning you don't have to be a fool. 
But if, you have, if you're a companion of a fool, you'll suffer harm too. Are you with me? When you walk with the wise, you become wise. My mom used to have the same, Dime con quien tu anda, yo diré quien tu eres. Now some of the folks here that don't understand Spanish just said to themselves, Lord, reveal that to me. <laughs> but the reality is that my mom used to say, tell me who you're hanging out with, I'm going to tell you who you are. So when she saw me in the corner doing things and with all these people, she was like, what are you into? And I would be like, no, mom, I'm a good kid, mom. And she was like, no, I know all those people you're hanging out with in the corner. You into drugs and stuff? I used to be like, no, but everybody on the corner was selling drugs. So the reality is that because I hung out with them long enough, I became them. Here's the kicker. One day, I'll never forget this day. It's kind of little things. I, I, I jumped in a car. You know, these dudes picked me up. They're like, what up, Johnny? So we got in the car, and they're like, I said, yo, where you get this car from? He's like, nah, I borrowed it. So I get in the car, right? <laughs> I get in the car. These fools stole a car. I'm young, too, real young. I don't know, 14, 13, something like that. I'm in the car. I'm like, what? Because we're like 14 years old. I ain't thinking this dude licensed all that. That's the last thing. I'm like, you got a car. <laughs> so we all get in the car. I think, I don't know what we were playing back then. I don't remember that, but maybe it was Big Pond or Jay-Z. And we're like, I was like, nah, I'm all up in the car, right? And so this thing is jamming. All of a sudden, whoop, whoop. I'm like, I think, I think they're trying to stop us. Dude's like, nah, bro, it, yo, 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 just hide the stuff. I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm like, I thought you borrowed the car. He said, I stole it. So I'm like, what? It was my first get out of the car, pick me up in the air like this, and slam me on the ground, right? <laughs> oh, while I'm getting picked up and in the, in the air, I'm telling the dude, you better tell him the truth that I didn't know nothing. You better tell him. You know how that goes, right? Hey, yo, you better tell him. <laughs> you better, truthful moment. <laughs> so I'm in the air, boom, I get slammed on the floor. I'm looking at him like, he's like, sir, he didn't know nothing. But the companion of fools will suffer harm. He said, that's all right. Guilty by association. Get in the car. So I wind up going to jail for this stupid dude. I wish this was live and you was out there. No, I'm joking. <laughs> stupid dude. But the reality is, I was the companion of a fool. I should have been hanging out with the wise. I could have complained all day long. I knew what it was. Are you with me? Some of y'all like, some of y'all need to pick your crew. Huh? Let's look at Luke 6.12. Because we're going to learn from the master. On how to pick your crew. Right? Come on. How are you going to pick your crew? Woo! Let's read it. Luke 6.12. It was at the time he went off to the mountain to pray. Everybody say pray. He spent the whole night in prayer to God. Not a couple minutes, a few minutes. This is Jesus. And he spent the whole night in prayer to God. And when they came, he called his disciples to him and chose 12 of them. Man, this is good. And right here, when you see he called his disciples to him, this is real good to know too, right? Because the reality is some people are called to you. But some people might just, oh man. See, you might be picking people that just are in it for the big vision and for what you, God's going to do in your life. See, the problem with those people is that when you pick those people, when the next, be the next best thing comes, they leave you. Things start getting tough, they leave you. But there's some people that have been called to you. Those people, when you pick those people that have been called to you, what winds up happening is that it doesn't matter how hard it gets. It doesn't matter what's going on, money, no money. We get big, it gets small, it gets in the middle. It does not matter because they will call to you so they will commit to you despite of the circumstances and indifferences that y'all might have. Are you with me? Oh, but let me give you some more stuff. See, you can't pick right if you see wrong. You can't pick right if you see wrong. See, because most of us, let's be real. 
we pick according to personality and packaging, right? When we're dating, let's be real. Especially if you're in the world. If you ain't in your world, you're definitely still picking like this. You pick according to, per oh, he's so funny. Oh, he looked good. Praise God. I see, I mean, he goes to church and stuff. Like, I see Jesus. Huh? Come on, y'all. That's how, how y'all been in 50 bad relationships. Oh, look, he's sitting on the third row. He's cute. <sighs> Praise God. I know you answered me. You, you even got the, <laughs> the Holy Ghost wave. You know what I'm saying? Praise God. I know this was my day. I receive it. I believe it. I receive it. I believe it. I receive it. I believe it. I receive it. <laughs> oh, man, y'all don't stay behind. Praise the Lord. I saw her in the woman's hangout. She's been going to Bible study. She must be it. Because we pick personality and packaging. You ever heard one of your friends talk about, man, bro, I think this one's her. You know what I'm saying? You're like, yeah, what? why do you think? And it's like, she got character. <laughs> never, never. Let's be real. When's the last time you really heard somebody going, you know, I just like her character. <laughs> See, the thing is, the thing is this. The thing is this. You going off of that outside stuff that falls, you can't buy character. You with me? Some of you ain't seeing right, so you picking wrong. Some of you ain't seeing. Look, 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 look. You want me to show y'all? Okay, I'm gonna do it anyway. Let me give you. Let, let me give you. So I started thinking about my wife. Let's look at my wife. So her whole life, she wasn't seeing right. She was picking wrong. All of a sudden, she comes here. I'm gonna put me in this one. She picking wrong. She picking wrong. She picking wrong. She picking wrong. All of a sudden, she meet this dude that everybody around her said, "You crazy." Because they looking at me, right? I ain't got no, my clothes jacked up. I ain't got no money. I still got the thrift store clothing from CDC. You with me? I'm jacked up. You with me? So from the outside, her, her family, everybody, I said it, everybody like, yo, you going to be with this dude from prison? You going to be this, with this dude? He ain't got nothing. Can I get an amen? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. But now Ruthie. Ruthie looking at me like, mm. <laughs> He honest. He got some peace. He ain't tripping like. I'm thinking, right? She like, he got some peace up in there. He's always smiling, so he got some joy. He don't look all that from the outside quite yet, but I can work with this. <laughs> Let me see. If I can get him a haircut, I'll buy him some shoes. <laughs> and I can give him just a good enough push, he'll do the rest. My man got Jesus up in his life. I might change his name from Juan to Jesus. <laughs> Y'all following me? Y'all following me? Y'all ain't listening right now. She saw something that nobody else could see because you can't buy character. Come on, you can't just pick that thing from the shelf. She, she said, some of y'all ladies, oh, y'all need to, y'all picking the wrong thing. Y'all need to take that dude, get him some shoes and some clothes because he got some character. And then you'll see how your life turns out. You might pick the hotness before you know you cheated on that right there, service is over, Father, in the name of... <laughs> Y'all really got to think. Huh? I was praying for Ruthie, for Ruthie, give, uh, God, give her a man, give her this. I prayed myself in. So she said, she said, fool, you pray yourself in. But I say, I, I, I saw that this woman loved the Lord. I mean, that's really how, you know, I liked her hair. I thought she was kind of hot and all stuff, but I wasn't, that wasn't like this. Chicks everywhere. But when I saw her worshiping like this, I said, ooh. I felt like the woo oh, you know, in the cartoons. Because I knew, I knew that we have a, a chance to fight for love. Because she knew love, and so did I. Now we had to figure out how we were going to do this together. Are y'all with me? Some of y'all are picking your crew. That was a whole relationship. Love wins part two. 
Some of y'all are picking your crew based on personality and packaging. See, some people lose the asset because they can't handle the agitation. What, what do you mean, Pastor? Oh, well. See, even in the beginning, with me and Ruthie, like, there, you, I started thinking, like, was this God? It's just the reality, right? We got married, a whole new world. I love you. I love you, too. And next thing you know, reality kicks in. She wants to do this stuff, and I don't want to do it, and she wants to do this, and, I, and she don't want to do it, and all this stuff. And until I embraced our indifferences, I, I might have lost on an asset for a liability because she was cool and we laughed. See, what I mean by that is that most people that get truth told to them get agitated. See, you don't want nobody to tell you what to do. You don't want nobody to give you advice or answers. Matter of fact, most people go to church because in case there's a hell, uh, uh, what? I don't want to wait till I get to heaven. I want heaven now. Here. My wife says something that blew me away. She said, if you want heaven in your marriage, you got to kill your earthly self. Uh, you want heaven in your situation, you got to die to self. You got to learn how to carry your cross. And most people, let me show you something that you're going to partner with, that you're going to pick your, when you, God's showing you your crew, it might be a person that might not agree with you. Pastor Juan, make it a little more simple. Oh, no problem. If eyeballs were hanging out and some ears are hanging out and you were going to make a body, all the eyes, they're like, oh, I can't wait till I see today. Me too. But then all of a sudden, you need a nose to make this possible. And the nose is like, I don't want to see today. And you're like, what? It's like, no, nah, I, I want to smell stuff. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, you got some ears, and the ears are like, smell stuff. That's stupid. I want to hear something. And the eyes telling the ear, well, are you down with me? Because, I mean, you don't want to see something today? And he's like, no, nah, I just want to hear stuff. And the mouth is like, no, we're not going to do any of that stuff. We're going to talk all day. <laughs> are you with me? We're going to talk all day. Forget about all that seeing stuff. What do you want to see anyway? I don't even know why you do that. That's stupid. And then the hands get involved. And he's like, you know what? Eyes nose and mouth y'all need to just shut up now we got a problem because the ears is like well we cool and he sticks the two thumbs in here he's like everybody everybody just you know what I'm saying? can't go nowhere you can't do nothing so the ears the eyes they might get agitated but they when the moment they figure out that they need that other party then it completes a body. So just as much as you think you all that because you are I and you don't really want to hang out with the ear, or the ear don't really want to hang out with the, you all need each other. And most of the time, the opposites have to come into agreement. Because if the eyes and the ears say, look, let's just all become unified, I need you. And so now you get to go to places and you get to do something with your body. What about in your successes? What about in your life? What about in church life? Are you serving as part of the body? You, you need that. But you get agitated and what you do is you run away. You don't call those people. The people that agitate you, that got a good answer for you, you don't. I was, thought, I was thinking about it this morning. I was like, man, this is funny. Most of my uh, leads and stuff, they love me. The pastors love me and all that, but I agitate them sometimes. <laughs> you heard the laugh on the side? Yeah. Mm -hmm. no. <laughs> but they know. They, they've came to grip. They got two choices. They either go, man, whatever, and they run away from me, or they go, I need this. So I'll take the agitation because I know in that comes fruit. Just as much as I know I need them. Y'all always hear me talk about Pastor Greg. Well, that boy agitated me. I was just so agitated because I'm like, how could a person 
know what he's going to do December 19th at 3 o'clock in 2020. I'm like, that doesn't make sense to me. I'm trying to figure out the week. How do you know where you're going next year? He's like, yeah, I eat dinner with my friends on Tuesday. On Wednesday, I, I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I'm like, what is that? I'm like, who does that? See, because two visionaries, we can hang out together all day long. We're like, oh, man, you know what? It's funny because we did that chart, and I was all by myself on this chart. All by myself. And then everybody was like here. Some here, close to me, some here. So I'm the guy going, I, which is so, rightfully so. I'm the pastor of the church. So I'm, I'm like, you see this? Yeah, we're going to get there. We're going to go to the moon. Then we're going to come over here. We're going to come there. We're going to do this. And so you get another guy that's just like me, and he's like, I see it. And we can go over there. And we start talking about it. Then one person comes in. <laughs> At that time, it was my wife. How are you going to do it? When are you going to start? How many people are you going to need? I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And this is what we do. Ready? We discredit that. Rather than embracing that because I need that. And we go, man, ugh, you're always killing the party. I mean, every time I say, <laughs> who used to say? She used to, I'll pop your bubble. After a while, she used to start joking with me and she'd say, I'm going to pop your bubble. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. Now you're taunting me. <laughs> But the reality was I started to understand what she was saying. You, you need me. But so does she need me. And when will you get to the place where you start picking your crew based upon maturity? There's one thing to hang out and have a bunch of laughs. But there's another thing to pick a crew who's honest that will help you build. You with me? To build things in life to accomplish your goals and your mission. When are you going to start picking mature? When are you going to stop the immaturity of everything having to be a... What about the mature side of it? Picking a crew that helps you build, that's in your business, that talks to you, that tells you the truth despite of what you want to hear. Thank you again for watching this message. We want to make sure that we stay connected with you and you stay connected with us. So make sure you check us out on social media. Make sure you go to our website, www.getwrapped.tv. Don't forget to share this message. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.